Hello everybody, welcome. Um, I'm just glazing off a few things here uh, on my table here in front of me. Um, different things I've got to think about glazing. I've got this lidded um, biscuit barrel. That's one thing. I've got some, some more, more jugs here. I've got another lidded biscuit barrel here. Fluted. Um, an assortment of things. Another bowl here. Again, diagonal fluted bowl, which I've got a. And I've got the wobbly charger. <laughs> the wobbly charger. I've got a glaze as well. Problem is, we've got very little glaze left here in the bucket, and. Um, Going to be heading back to to, to Europe now for a spell uh, for a few weeks anyway, and I'm in a situation where I'm not wanting to actually mix up any more glaze, so I'm just using up the the last of this bucket. So um, how to glaze a piece like that when you've got a very little amount of glaze? Let's just bring the camera in a little bit closer. I know you like a bit of detail. So, well, there, there you can see the the bucket. Now, I've, I've really, I've really got very little glaze. You see, I've taken some out and put it, put it here in a jug because this is this plate. I'm going to have to pour it. You see, but I'm going to have to pour it in such a way that I don't make a mess and spill all the glaze all over the floor. So I have to do a little bit of thinking beforehand about um, the best way of going about pouring this. Um, so yes, it's a troublesome thought to me exactly how I'm going to do it. Um, I'm thinking if I pour if I pour the the back of the plate first. The, the problem is he, he's an awkward customer because he's he's he's, he's, he's reasonably heavy, and um, and I've got to pour in such a way where I, so I'm spinning it like this as I'm pouring, and uh, very likely to make a complete fool of myself. But I'm thinking I'm going to glaze the outside of the pot first, then turn him over. And then do then then do the then do the inside. That's what I'm thinking. Or I could do it the other way around. Let's try and do it the other way around. So I'm gonna I'm gonna as I'm holding him un underneath like that on the foot, you see. So I'm gonna wind my wind my wrist up like that. Okay. I'm gonna pour in the glaze. And I'm as I'm pouring out, you see, as I'm turning it. Now it is a bit okay. So we managed there to to glaze the inside of that piece, holding underneath. Now there will be some overlap on the outside. Now what I'm going to have to do is let that dry, so then I can invert it onto my hand the other way up, and I'm going to pour over the back side of it. Okay, I'm just going to have to let that dry just a touch. Meanwhile, 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 back at the ranch, I've got here this little biscuit barrel. So it's, it's quite important to get the thing um, well dusted off, especially if it's a pot that's got flutes on it like that. The, the dust collects in the flute, so give it a good, give it a good dusting off, good brush off. So, now this little number, what we're going to have to do is roll him, because I can't, there's not enough glaze in the bucket to dip him. So let's just move this uh, a touch closer to the bucket there 
you know it's all about these little techniques isn't it that we that we need to learn um, everything is is relatively simple it's just that it's down to technique isn't it and how you do it once you know how to do it and you learn the technique it's going to put that bit of glaze back in there so now so you've got a piece like that you've got not enough depth to dip it so you're going to have to put it in and roll it now this of course here on on the on the gallery <coughs> where where the lid is going to fit all the glaze that gets there is going to have to be scraped off afterwards now i know some people say oh well why don't you just wax it well quite frankly i can't be bothered because <laughs> it's just like this one maybe i've got to do in one other it isn't really worth going to the hassle of having to heat up a whole lot of wax or or paint on wax to do that i don't actually have any paint on wax perhaps if i did have some paint on wax i might be tempted just to to put a bit of wax around there i don't have any to be honest so i can't do that so i'm certainly not going to be going to the trouble of heating up hot wax at the moment just for that so it's actually not so bad just to to do it as i'm going to show you so let's just let's just dip him in and he, he floats you see so you can make him go round and round like that you see now i'm letting some glaze go on the inside and then I'm pouring out. Okay. He's okay, he's glazed on the inside and the outside. One fluted biscuit barrel. Good. All right, so we're gonna put him down there. What next? We've got to do the lid, haven't we? This is the lid. This is the lid that went on the jar, that lived in the house that Jack built. <laughs> no. Okay, so there are different ways of doing lids. You can hold them like just like that and, and just go through the glaze like that. The trouble is though, you can leave little areas where your fingers have been. Another way of doing it is to expand your hand inward, outwards, as it were, like that. Okay? In this case, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, and I was glazing a pot yesterday and it slipped out of my hand. It was a big sploosh, the glaze went everywhere. You know, when you're glazing pots and it's a little bit awkward sometimes, that does happen. They, uh, they slip out of your hand and that's just, just have to, just have to run with it when that kind of thing happens because sometimes it does. This is a little, a little covered, a little covered box I did with a, a, a turned foot. I think you've seen me do these before. Okay, it's, it's got no gallery, it's just got a, an angle and an angle on there. I think you can, hopefully you can see that. And that locates itself. It's not the best kind of fitting lid, but it does locate to some extent. And the, the castellated foot, you can see how I've done that. I think that's a, 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 nice, a nice way to finish off sometimes the bottom of a pot like that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to glaze that one and then I've got this another one here to do, which I think... Now this one, the lid is held with little clay spigots. So that does help locate it a bit better. Again, with a, a turned out foot with the scalloped. And that's literally just done um, with... Where's my pottery knife? Well, I have a, a normal kind of fettling kind of knife here, but it's literally while the clay is after you've trimmed it, you just you cut these bits out like this, you see. And that's how you do it. So that's 
So let's do this fella, this other one, this little one. So let's just run him through the glaze. Remember things with feet that are recessed out, if you glaze them, turn them upside down so the glaze comes out of the foot. We're going to just hold him like that. Letting the glaze out, you see. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Yeah, there's a lot to learn about glazing and there's a lot of a lot to learn about making glazes and mixing up glazes but there's a lot to learn about the actual the actual technique of 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 glazing itself um, now sometimes you can do this turn a bucket like that it gives you just a little bit more depth you see if you need to get a bit extra depth this is a Chino glaze, the one that you've seen me working with, which I'm still working with and trying to um, persevere with. Hopefully this firing I'm going to be getting it up to a high temperature. Last time we, we got up to cone 9, but I wanted it to go a little higher than that really. Couldn't see in the in the kiln because of the the um, the spy hole was such a small hole at the end. I came to the conclusion that when it got up to when it got up to like when it got up to the temperature, I could hardly could hardly see the cone. It was very hard to dis distinguish it. So, all right. So what other what are what other items have we got here to show you? I've got some actually some. Some other little covered boxes that I made way back that have just been sitting on a shelf here. This has got like a, a Sullivan glaze, which is still needing to be finished cleaning off. I've cleaned off some of it there, you can see. Scraped it back. Remember, when you scrape back, always scrape back and leave a good margin to allow for the possibility of the glaze running. Because if you leave no margin and it runs, you can have a problem. Right, now what we need to do now is get back to that charger. I'm going to have to see what's going on here with this. Yeah. Well you can see what's happened. You see I've, I've glazed the front side fine. Well the back side of course it's, it's, it's gone over the edge a little bit. But you know I'm not going to worry about it in this case. So what we're going to do is pour some of that just pull back the camera a little bit. That's it. Okay. I think our battery is getting looking rather low. So it must be quick here now. Uh, pour some of this into the jug, you see. When you do this, make sure you get a good sized jug and you pour a lot in. Like that. So, I'm going to now. Now, this was where I could very well come unstuck. Uh, I hope I don't, but it's very likely I may. But, take a walk on the wild side. Let's go. Now, when you do this thing, do this kind of thing, keep a, keep a cool head, okay? I think we've done it. Now I've got to get some of that glaze out the, in the recess, out of the recess. I've got to turn it upside down like that. Okay, any bits on here that I've missed, any odd little bits like that there, what I will do is g go over with a brush, but I think, I've, I think everything has, has been covered. So I'm going to put that over here. I know some people will be writing and saying, well Simon, why not just make up more glaze? Why go to all this 
keep on showing us all these videos with us when you've got no glaze in the bucket. Come on, make up more glaze. Come on, man, pull this up together. Well, I agree. I agree, I should have more glaze, but you know what? This was the first time I mixed up this glaze and I wanted to test it out first before I, I made up a big batch of it, so that's actually the reason. There's method in my madness, you know. And so life goes on, life of the potter. <laughs> anyway, I hope that's been of, of help to somebody. I've got more pots to do here and we're gonna get them into the kiln downstairs there and have another firing. Okay, Simon Leach saying, keep practicing, persevere, don't give up. You get there. See you soon.